Question number one. What is the likely diagnosis of these ultrasound pictures of ovarian masses? Iota suggests a three-step strategy for assessment of adnexal pathology. About 50% of adnexal masses are easy to diagnose. This is first step and called simple descriptors. A large number of residual tumors can be characterized by using simple alternative ultrasound-based rules to predict the benign or malignant nature of MS. These are called simple rules. The remaining masses can be evaluated by a subjective impression of an expert, so the third step is expert opinion. What are the simple descriptors? There are predicted outcome benign, and the predicted outcome malignant. A unilocular tumor with ground glass echogenicity in a premenopausal woman is suggestive of endometrium. A unilocular tumor with mixed echogenicity and the acoustic shadow in a premenopausal woman is suggestive of teratoma. A unilocular anechoic tumor with regular walls and a maximum diameter less than 10 cm is suggestive of a simple cyst or cyst adenoma. A remaining unilocular tumor with regular walls can be a functional cyst such as hemorrhagic cyst. A tumor with ascites and at least moderate color Doppler flow in a postmenopausal woman is suggestive of a malignant tumor. Another feature of malignancy is the age more than 50 years and CA125 more than 100 unit per man. And so the answer of question 1, picture A is a simple cyst, B is a hemorrhagic cyst, C with a ground glass appearance is suggestive of endometrioma, picture D with mixed echogenicity and echogenic nodule and the hypoacoustic shadow is suggestive of dermoid cyst. Second question contains four sonographic pictures of the endometrium. Which image corresponds with the secretory phase of the menstrual cycle? And how would you measure endometrial thickness? The endometrial appearance correlate with the phasic changes of the menstrual cycle. In the early proliferative phase, it is a thin, brightly echogenic stripe comprising of basal layer. In the late proliferative phase, it develops a trilaminar appearance. Outer echogenic basal layer, middle hypoechoic functional layer, and an inner echogenic stripe at the central interface. In the secretory phase, the endometrium become thick up to 16 mm and they become uniformly echogenic as the functional layer become edematous and is isoechoic to the basal layer. Answer of the second question, image D correspond to the secretory phase of the menstrual cycle. Regarding measurement of endometrial thickness, obtain a sagittal plane of the uterus. The central endometrial echo is continuous with the endocervical canal. One caliber at the echogenic interface of the anterior basal layer and myometrium. The other caliber at the similar echogenic interface of the posterior basal layer. The hypoechoic halo surrounding the endometrium is not included in the measurements. In the third question, a 25-year-old woman presents with intermenstrual bleeding. Investigation A was performed and picture B was found. What is the name of investigation A? And what is the diagnosis in picture B? Mention two radiologic features of this diagnosis.
Hysterosonography, also known as sonohistrography or saline infusion sonography, is defined as a transvaginal ultrasound performed during the installation of saline into the uterine cavity. After cleansing of the vaginal introitus, a speculum is introduced into the vaginal canal and the cervix identified. Once a cleaning with bovidone iodine or other solution, a 5 French balloon tipped catheter is gently placed through the cervical os into the endometrial cavity and the balloon is expanded against the internal cervical os. The speculum is removed and the transvaginal ultrasound probe is placed into the vagina against the catheter and a sterile saline is infused and then images of the endometrium are obtained in multiple planes. Endometrial polyps are hyperplastic overgrowth of endometrial glands and stroma that form a projection from the surface of the endometrium. Clinically, endometrial polyps are common cause of abnormal uterine bleeding in both premenopausal and postmenopausal women. Intermenstrual bleeding is the most frequent symptom in premenopausal women with endometrial polyp. However, endometrial polyps may be asymptomatic. Ultrasound examination can detect endometrial polyp, and the best time for examination is during menses or during the follicular phase. During menses, the endometrium is thin, and a fluid may be present inside the endometrial cavity. And also during the follicular phase, the endometrium is hypoechoic and thin. The finding is an echogenic mass inside the uterine cavity with a narrow base and a single feeding vessel. During the early follicular phase, the echogenic endometrial polyp can be clearly visualized against the hypoechoic endometrium. While during the secretory phase, when the endometrium becomes echogenic, the echogenic endometrial polyp may be difficult to be visualized. Regarding the answer of question 3, the name of investigation A is sonohistrography or saline infusion sonography. The diagnosis is endometrial polyp, and the radiological feature of endometrial polyp are it is an echogenic mass inside the uterine cavity with a narrow base and a single feeding vessel.